In this video, we're going to be looking at permutations and combinations. But before we jump into that, we have to look at some special notation. So let's say we have 6 factorial. That exclamation mark is a factorial symbol. You may have never seen it before. We call it a factorial, not an exclamation mark. And what it means is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It doesn't mean 6 is excited. It just means we're going to multiply down from 6 all the way to 1. So, for example, if you had 7 factorial, what would that be? Well, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Of course, you could type that all in your calculator. Or there's a little shortcut. Let's say you had 9 factorial, for example. You could actually, in your calculator, type 9, then hit the math button, go over to PRB, and then hit the factorial button. That would save you from having to type it all out. And when you do that, you get 362,880. So factorials are very useful and important when we talk about combinations and permutations. So next, let's look at two examples, and let's talk about them. So in the first example, I have 20 students in a class. I'm going to pick five students for a prize. The, fir the first student I pick will get first prize, the second student second prize, and so on. So ask yourself here, does the order matter when I draw their names out of the hat? Of course, the answer there would be yes, the order does matter, because if I pick you fifth, you get fifth prize instead of first prize. This example says I have 20 students in a class. I'm going to pick five students for a prize. They will all get the same prize. So would the order I pick the students in here matter? Well, no, because if I pick you first or fifth, you're going to get the same prize, so it doesn't matter which order I pick you in. So in one sense, the order I draw the names in matters. The other sense, it doesn't matter. So when the order matters, we use what's called a permutation. When the order doesn't matter, we use what's called a combination. Permutations and combinations tell us the total possible ways that something can happen. For example, if I use a permutation, I can actually figure out how many ways I could draw five students for a prize out of 20 where the order matters. If I use a combination, I can figure out a way to draw five students from a hat when there's 20 students when the order doesn't matter. So the notation for a permutation is what we call NPR, where N is the number of items I am choosing from. Keyword there is choosing from. And R is the number of items I am choosing. So, in this sense, NPR has an actual formula, which is N factorial over N minus R factorial. So the number of items I'm choosing from factorial over the number of items I'm choosing from minus the number of items I'm choosing factorial. So in this situation, it would be 20 factorial over 20 minus 5 factorial which is 20 factorial over 15 factorial. We'll come back to this in a second and actually solve that. For a combination, instead of NPR, it's NCR, where N, once again, is the number of items I'm choosing from, and R is the number of items I'm choosing. The formula here is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. So the way this would be set up is 20 factorial over 5 factorial times 20 minus 5 factorial, which is 20 factorial over 5 factorial times 15 factorial. We'll solve that in a bit as well. But I need you to make sure you know how to put these in to their formats. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have 21 factorial over 18 factorial. If I type those numbers in my calculator, I get really large numbers. There's actually a shortcut to reduce this. 21 factorial, you can think of as 21 times 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16, dot, 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 dot. 18 factorial is thought of as 18, fact, 18 times 17 times 16 times 15, dot, 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 dot. Notice we can actually cancel out everything all the way to 1, where up top all I'm left with is 21 times 20 times 19, and that's easy to type in our calculator. So this answer would actually be 7980. So if we come back here, 
I have 20 factorial over 15 factorial. So everything from 15 on is going to cancel out. So I'm going to go for 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16. Which when I type out my calculator, I get 1,860,480. So there is 1,860,480 ways to choose five people when the order makes a difference. When I do this problem here, once again, everything from 15 down is going to cancel. So I get 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16. But I still have this 5 factorial, which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So I need to do 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 and divide that number times five by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And when I do that, I get 15,504 ways. So there's 15,504 ways I could pick just five students for a prize where the order doesn't make a difference. All right, let's look at an example. Let's say we have seven books. And I want to know how many ways can I arrange the seven books? How can I arrange them? So would the order matter? Well, of course it was. I could go book one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or I could go book one, three, two, four, five, six, seven. Those are all different ways to organize the books, but I'm using the same book. So I'm going to use a permutation because the order makes a difference. How many books am I choosing from? Seven. And how many books will I be choosing? Well, seven. So the formula will be 7 factorial over 7 minus 7 factorial, which gives you 7 factorial over 0 factorial. By definition, 0 factorial equals 1. If you want to see why that's true, you can come ask me. But 0 factorial does equal 1. So I get 7 factorial over 1, which of course will just be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which gives me 5,040. So the 5,040 ways to organize seven books. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's say we have 12 students. And they want to know how many ways they can get in groups of, well, let's not do groups. We have 12 students, and they want to know how many ways that they can, yeah, form a group of seven. One group of seven. So all we have, to, so we have to think here, does order matter? If I pick one student and then another student, or if I pick them vice versa, would it make a difference? No, because they're in the same group. So I'm going to do 12 combination 7 because order does not make a difference here. So this is 12 factorial over 7 factorial, 12 minus 7 factorial, which is 12 factorial, or 7 factorial times 5 factorial. So notice, seven's bigger, so I'm going to work with seven crossing out. Everything after seven's gone. So 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Type in your calculator, and of course divide. When I do that, I get 792 ways. So that class has 792 ways to make a group of seven. All right, let's look at one more and let you decide what we're going to do with it. Um, let's see here. Let's say we're playing poker, and there's 52 cards, and you have to pick five cards from the deck. How many different combinations can you have? Pause the video and try it. All right, so 52 cards. You only get to pick five. Does the order matter? No, of course it doesn't matter. I could pick a jack, queen, king, ace, two, and it would be the same as picking a King, queen, ace, jack, two. So I'm going to use a combination. So 52, choose five. So 52 factorial over five factorial. That's 52 minus five factorial equals 52 factorial over five factorial. That's 47. So everything from 47 up here and on will go away. So I'm going to 52, 51, 50, 49, 48 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Type in your calculator. Divide it. And you get that there are this many combinations in that game. 2,598,960.
So make sure you practice the worksheet and differentiate between order mattering or not. Thank you for watching.